always announce it here first, my road dates, because you guys are my engaged listeners, and that's what makes sense. And you're going to come see me in the next couple of weeks. I am in Vegas July 15th at the brand new Virgin Hotel, uh, July 16th at the Celebrity Theater in Phoenix, Arizona, uh, and then in Boulder, Colorado on the 17th uh, at the Boulder Theater. The following week, or actually the following few days later, July 20th, I'm in Portland at the Arlene Schnitzer Concert Hall. I haven't been to Portland in a minute. I love you guys. You're always asking me to come. I'm there. Tell a friend as, as well. If you hear this city, tell your friend. They don't want to miss me, I promise you. Seattle, Washington on July 21st, the Paramount Theater. The Vogue Theater in Vancouver, my first ever Canadian solo date on July 22nd. Um, I'll be at uh, in Canada a few months from now again in Hamilton and Toronto in October. And then there's a bunch of new dates that were just announced for the fall. Really quickly, it's Richmond, Virginia, Hershey, PA, Knoxville, Tennessee, Atlanta, Birmingham, Louisville, Evansville, Jacksonville, Tampa, Orlando, Sacramento, San Jose, and Santa Rosa. Those are all on sale right now, and they're all not coming until the fall. So you can get those tickets right away. They're the good tickets, and I'll see you guys in July. I appreciate you guys. Come laugh. Hey, baby, go to chrisdcomedy.com. I am in Montreal at the end of July. I am in Burlington, Vermont, and I got Bray Improv in August, and we got San Francisco in September, and we got Chicago Theater in September. We got more dates coming soon, but Montreal and Vermont on sale now, July 27th and 29th. chrisdcomedy.com for ticket wikis. Also, my special, Special Weshi, out on Netflix. Uh, don't be a fake. Don't be a flake. Don't run away from your feelings, babe. Hey babe, hey babe. What's up, baby? How are you doing? First of all, the haircut looks fresh. It looks hello fresh. Wow, America's number one haircut. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, what was the what I asked for? I asked for the Mediterranean shrimp scampi. Not he cut my hair in twenty minutes. Twenty it's minutes, very convenient, right in my doorstep. I didn't have to leave my home. That's what it is, Bubba's. You got a haircut too. We haven't seen each other in a minute, but you look like you got a new haircut. I got a haircut two weeks ago. High and tight, babe. High and schmighty. Yeah. Um, I uh, wa- DeRosa ripped me for it. I don't know why. Well, d- does DeRosa even have hair? I don't know. He has, <laughs> he has something on his head on top DeRosa's of his head. DeRosa's one of those guys like he, he, you know, he has hair, but he looks bald. He's skinny, but he feels <laughs> fat. You know, like he's he's just one of those guys where like you think <laughs> like. You like if you said if you said hey Joe DeRosa is short bald and fat I'd be like yeah he is <laughs> but very but then, when, but then when you meet him he's tall has hair and not fat yeah yeah, yeah. but he just has the personality of just a yeah, short he has, the, he has the soul of a short fat bald person you know and, it, and it, it's so visceral that it almost takes over his physical appearance yeah yeah that's interesting it's interesting um very very observant Bubba's I um. So what so far this week, what has been, it's only Thursday, but what has been the best? Can you pick one moment of your week that's been the best? It's very hard to pick a moment. Oh, my God. I'm talking about a 60 to not, uh, no, a five second or less moment of your week. Can you Ooh. even think of one? Ooh, because I, I, I am assuming this means that you have something I, locked and loaded. I'm going to think of mine while you think of yours. Okay. Well, moments ago, I don't think this is the best thing. Well, I had some good shows this weekend, but that's lame. I brought a little kid on stage. Okay. And it was, uh, oh, it was good. I, it was, I ended up taking like 20 minutes before that kid got off the stage. It did was you, one of those things that just kept giving and giving and giving. Did you, get it? Did you tape it? Uh, I recorded it. I didn't tape it. I know. But nice, I know. Would have been a nice TikTok. I know. Um, but I, as moments ago, I just found out. I think I've been asked, or at least I'm in the in the in the running to host the uh, roast of Ric Flair. I don't know if I should whoa, even say that. This came across. This came across my phone moments ago. Comedy Sench? Uh No, it's going to be like on uh, like a pay per view. Like it's Star at like a fight TV and Triller and all that stuff. Okay, like that kind of thing. That's sick. That's um, a great moment. Yeah, but I don't even know if she didn't say that because I don't know if I'm taking the job. I don't know if they're really offering me the job. I didn't talk about anything, but I just got it. And I was like, whoa, I wasn't expecting it. I was kind of blind. What city and state would it be? Nashville, July 29th at the fairgrounds. 
How hot is it going to be July 29th in Nashville? Woo! At the fairgrounds, too, probably at outside. the fairgrounds. Yeah, well, if you guys don't go to that, you can go July event. 29th. Come see me at Club Soda in Montreal. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, Club Soda? That's what the name of the venue I'm doing in Montreal. Cheeky. Just for you're not doing the Just for Laughs Comedy Festival this, no, this year. No, I'm doing Vancouver on July 22nd, and then in, in October I'm doing Hamilton and Toronto. But I'm not part of the JFL, if you will. I've never ever been to Vancouver, and it's some place it's gorgeous that I'd love to go. I went for vacation. I did everything. I took a seaplane to a to a little island. I swam in like freezing cold waters. I went up in the mountains. I went to the world's biggest like suspe- like foot suspension bridge. Uh huh. Uh, I did all sorts of fun stuff in Vancouver's. Do you know? They, they have a beautiful little, it's it's much like Seattle. They have this cool little downtown area, and the, the, the hills are separated by water, and then in the middle, there's this like little thing you go to, I forget what it's called, but all these different shops and food markets, and it's really, really cool. So you're saying Vancouver's a must? I loved it. Really? Yeah, I loved it. Would you keep it if 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 there become, like if a warlord takes over the world? which could happen one day, and they start picking off cities, would you fight and die for the city of Vancouver? No. You'd let it go? Yeah, but I wouldn't fight and die for any city. You wouldn't fight and die for any city? No. What about New York? No. What about Paris? Paris? Yeah. Maybe. But that's the city of romance. What about London? (laughs) (laughs) No, would you? Would you fight for a city and die for it? Because, wait, are you saying that I could just migrate to another city or just I could skirt it and dodge it? I'm saying it? there's a warlord. I don't want to die. There's a warlord going around the world, and he's, ki- he's wiping cities off. There's a Genghis Khan. He's a warlord, and okay. he cannot be stopped. And each city that he goes to um, take over, the people of that city- Are getting slaughtered. Are, yeah, but they're defending the city. But you can join the resistance and defend certain cities well, that you like. All right, well, New York should have a pretty big resistance, right? Bronx alone. Yeah, the Bronx alone. Right. Who's do, true or false? And kids, email this to heybabepod at gmail.com. Who has more guns right now, Ukraine or the Bronx? Yeah, I mean, that's going to be, I mean, Ukraine, <laughs> Ukraine is, if you, you just saw the last news uh, report, Ukraine is pleading to the Bronx to send over <laughs> yeah. weapons. They're like, yo, 161st <laughs> Street, we need you. <laughs> um, Ric Flair doesn't know his real name because he was adopted on the black market. Is that true? If so, what? that's my leading my, That's my leading thing. What do you mean he's... Uh, what does that even mean, adopted on the black market? Can you, can you make the font bigger, Pimp? He was adopted shortly after he was born in 1949, February of 1949, in Memphis, Tennessee, and his adoption was arranged by the Tennessee Children's Home Society, an orphanage that was involved in kidnapping babies and orphaning up to those looking to adopt. Could you imagine you're just a mom and dad, and you go to adopt a baby, and you adopt baby infant Ric Flair. Oh my How god! How insane would that be? That would be. Not, he's in like the. He's in like the like the like the like the crib with like a like a bedazzled diaper. Yeah. Just like with with, with, with he's like when he cries, he's like woo, 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 woo. <laughs> and that's slapping how you know. his mom across the tits. <laughs> <laughs> he survived a plane crash in 1975. Wow. Yeah. 1975 survived a plane crash, um, which is the year Sal Volcano was born. 76, but you were you were in you was might I have was been in swimming. Ute. I was o- in you. October 1979, were you swimming in your dad's nuts or were you already in October, October 79, 79, 75. October, October 75. 75. Were, you, were you nuts swimming or were you implanted? I was nuts. You were nuts. Yeah. Okay, but yeah. that's still good. You were still kind of you were. In, I was in the conversation. You were in the area. Yeah. He also survived a lightning strike. Jesus the Christ. only thing Ric Flair is not going to be able to survive is the roast by Sal Volcano. <laughs> <laughs> uh, should I take it? I would take it. Hell yeah, dude. You're a huge wrestling fan. Yeah. That's like if they asked me to I roast know. George Washington. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> I know. I feel like I should. Oh, I don't know if it's like, hey, you, we want you to do this, but it said. You're in the running. We're, we're looking for, it said we're looking for someone to be the roast master. We know that you like wrestling and you could do it. Do, do you have any interest? Let us know. We'll give you all the information. Here's the thing. You have the interest, but do we have the time? Because to write a roast of Ric Flair and you being the roast master, you got to come out swinging. You got to come out hard. This might be the D stands for delegation on this one. Okay. You might you want to put that D in those jokes. And by D, I, I do mean dick, but I also mean delegation. Right, 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 right. So I think that might be, you know, we have a team of people coming out. And co- because 
It's very, I mean, dude, yeah, to sit I there and write to, roast to, jokes, to be the roast master, it's got to be your focus for two weeks. Yeah, 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 I And know. you can't. You already said you're doing Vancouver July 22nd. You can't do it. I know. And I'm coming back, and then, yeah, I mean, it's rough. I mean, I am free that weekend, I think. But it's tough. I don't know it's if close. a weekend's enough to write Ric Flair roast master jokes. If you were just on the panel, yeah. I'd say you cannot get out on the plane. But right. the roast master. Yeah, because then I got to hit everybody else. That's you got to hit everybody. There. And I'll tell you who else is going to be there. Let's see. Let's Some see of the who people else that are supposed it. to be there. Let me there. do a couple of guesses. Um, uh, um, who else is on it? Jim Norton. No, there's no other comics yet. Oh, okay. But some of the people that'll be on the that might be like on the dais or something. It's well, it's not mentioning any other comics or wrestlers, but non comics and non wrestlers. Charles Barkley. Okay, Charles we can Barkley. Ro- we yeah. can roast him up good. Okay, we can roast Kid the shit. Rock. Kid Rock. We can Easy. we can roast him. Charlie Sheen. Oh my God, you have AIDS. Yeah, <laughs> Ice T. Oh, Ice T. Hit him with all. T- hit him with jokes about Lipton. Sn- Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg. Absolutely. Dennis Rodman. Dennis Rodman. I mean, we could we could lace into all those people. Yeah, you can lace into them. I also though I put myself in the crosshairs though. But I mean, come at me. I don't, come I don't, at me. You, I, you can't say anything to me I haven't heard before. Come at me, Snoop Dogg. Yeah. Um, I think that that's I, I, honestly. See, here's the thing. How do you feel initially? The first moment. When you got that email, what did you say? Did I was you- like, oh, my God, because he's a legend, you know? And I was like, that would be really fun. Like, I was, like, immediately trying to think of, like, jokes. Right. But then I'm like, I have no time. I'm, I'm filming, so I'd have to be home. Like, I'm, I'm, I have no time. It's, it's, I'd be squeezing that in in the, in the 1% of time that I have. Who are you going to give it to? If you could trade it off to anybody, who would you give it to? The Rose to Ric Flair. Who would you just gift it to? I'd probably give it to another comic that is a wrestling fan. Big um, J, Roy Wood Jr. Well, they're not wrestling fans, though. Like Are that. they not? Big J just looks like a wrestler. Yeah, I don't think Big J... <laughs> I think Big J knows, like, old school stuff, but I don't know if he, he watches now. Who's, like, a die wrestling watch. fan? Taylor Williamson. Taylor Williamson. Man, who's a really funny... Ron I, I don't know Ron, though. Don't know I'm surprised Ron. they didn't ask Ron, actually. Taylor, you, Taylor Williamson is... If they ever make, and they should, if they ever make a live-to-action... Pinocchio, he sh- he's Pinocchio. Doesn't he just look like a little puppet boy? <laughs> he has a look about him. He has a little that puppet, is innocent, a little puppet boy him, look. He's yeah. very like innocent in the way that he's, he's the art- best. Yeah, look yeah, at that. Yeah, Taylor Williamson, there he is, great kid, Taylor yeah, Williamson. Yeah, he's, he's a buddy of mine. I, I, I've known Taylor a long time. I love Taylor. You guys, this story is pretty crazy. Okay, so Ric Flair um, was getting off a plane in Richmond, Virginia, which is the state capital. In uh, Rich, wait, he was getting off a plane where? Richmond, Virginia. I will be there October 28th at the Carpenter <laughs> Theater at 7 p.m. October 28th. Richmond, Virginia. State capital of Virginia. Also uh, the former uh, Confederate capital. Capital of the Confederate States. Oh, really? That's what it was. It was <laughs> Richmond, baby. Oh, they... Um, all right. They well, didn't have the jetways back then, back in the late 70s, and I was late for a match. I was a world champion then. I was wrestling Ricky Steamboat at the <laughs> Richmond Coliseum. Wow. Finally, they let us all get off the plane. I got off. I was walking. I didn't get 10, 15 feet. And all of a sudden, I felt this pressure boom. And my umbrella shot 50 feet in the air. I thought, what the hell? Lightning hit the top of my umbrella, bounced off, and hit a guy in the eye five feet behind me and killed him. What? Right there. I just stood there looking at the guy and froze. It scared me to death. Wow. What? Could you imagine? Well, the- it looks like he's been walking dead ever since, really. So Yeah. Let's get into it. <laughs> Let's get into it. <laughs> Could you imagine being killed because you got stabbed in the eye with Ric Flair's <laughs> lightning <laughs> bolt umbrella? <laughs> the odds. The odds. And you know, like, you know what has to happen there at that wake? Yeah. Do you know, like, the family of that guy has to... Like, no, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, no, what you heard is right. He, Ric Flair got hit with lightning, and then the umbrella <laughs> shot into the air and then came down and pierced Philip, and uh, he what? died from the lightning umbrella. It went right through his eye. Yeah, no, hey, thank you so much. Hey, no, yeah, what you heard is right. Yes. Uh, Rick, yeah, we have it closed because the, the umbrella no, went through his... He didn't get struck by... No, 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 he did not get no. struck by lightning directly. Uh, he, yeah. he got Ric Flair, the wrestler. Yes, Ric Flair yes. hit his umbrella, and then the umbrella yes. hit him in the eye. Thank you for coming so much. No, yes. Yeah, no, no. Well, Ric Flair, he, he didn't... No, Ric Flair, Flair didn't, didn't kill him. him. He's here because he feels bad. Be- his umbrella did, yes. Yes, exactly. No, but he was, it wasn't Ric Flair's fault. Uh, lightning, yes, lightning Yes, no, hit I, Ric Flair. No, I know he had cancer. That's not what he died from. That's not they it. They found cancer after when they were trying to save his life. They found a mass on his gallbladder, but that Ric Flair didn't put it there. No. 
Yes. So thank you, thank you for coming. The we umbrella is still in him in the cast. Yes. Yes. I couldn't yes. get it out. We did. Yes. Ric Flair did take the umbrella back because it was raining. <laughs> <laughs> Ric Flair's one of those guys. There's certain people. I think we've talked about this before in the pod. There's certain people that you think they're dead, but they're not. And Ric Flair's in that category where I think a lot of people. He you, had a couple of health scares in the last year. Or not so. you, because I know you're, you're you know a big wrestling fan. But uh, people who are like, you know, let's say peripheral wrestling fans, yeah. they would, I think a, a percentage of them would think Ric Flair is dead. I would agree with you. You know who I just had this thought about, like, not more than a day ago? Is Gene Hackman alive? Oh, what a good one. Right? I'm going to say, before you pull it up, Pimp, I'm going to put my vote you in as Gene this? Hackman is alive. I, I thought he was alive, too. You want to do this alive or dead, Ski? Yeah. Where is Gene Hackman living today? This is in February 20th, 2022. He's living in... New Mexico. He has three children from his first wife, whose name is Faye Maltese. (laughs) (laughs) So he's alive. He's alive. But I believe he stopped. Oh, look, acting, 1956, 2004. Then he retires acting and became a novelist. He's been writing novels? He just writes novels now. Wow. I had no idea. That's like Jim Carrey's just a painter now, not an actor. He, just paints. Is that true? That's what they say. Does he sell his art for money? I believe he sells his art. Top dollar. Yep. I believe he sells his art. Let's see if we can buy something of Jim Carrey's right now. Maybe we'll crowdsource the funds. What do you got? Yeah. Let's buy Jim Carrey's art. What do we got? Oh, art, oh, art yeah. Jim, yeah. Jim Carrey's art. Can, Here we go. Can, Code I, down buy, says can Carrey? I buy Jim Carrey's art? Yeah, Jim Carrey art for no, sale. That's, but that's going to be... Jim Carrey art, Ocean Blue Galleries. Here we go. Oh, my God. Oh, here we go. First limited editions of Jimmy Jimmy... Jim Carrey's art on canvas. Oh, you can call and... Uh, the place get, is in Tampa? You guys want to call them? Price something? I mean, can you? Oh, so you can't get a price online? Let's click on "Hooray, We Are Broken." Can't even cl- click on it. He's a phenomenal painter. Yeah, Jim Carrey ever, needed color. Did you ever see that video he did where he gave a speech? I think it might have been at like a, like a graduation. Yeah. I think he gave this. By the way, it just says Jim Carrey needed color. The title of that video should have been Jim Carrey living in color. Oh, God. Call, now I'm going to call them. I'm calling Fire them now and telling the them, intern. you know what, you assholes? First things first, well, let's see if we can get a price on it. Second thing, did you ever see the video he gave of a speech where it was like, it was like an amazing speech and then he pulled the canvas and it was like a, a 60 foot painting? No. It's, you should give it a go. Let's do it. It's, it's an impassioned speech. This See is, this? Look, can I show you something? Something to jerk I, off to later. I got these. Uh, now I keep, I keep the tags on shit, you know? Whoa, the, those are new Nike shorts? The new Nike basketball shorts, babe. With are they awesome? They're great. They're lightweight. They have, I love the tone of blue they have. The red goes out. You got red. them online? No, I bought them in person. Nike store. Where did I buy them? I bought them at Motor 3. It's a retail store. It's a, it's a like a, 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 a streetwear sneaker store in Milwaukee. 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 Still never been there. I mean, the fact that we still wear tassels on graduation hats is just yeah. pretty, pretty funny. And look, at, can I just say something? He, I love Jim Carrey. Jim, you know, all that aside, he looks like an idiot. He does. In this picture. He, he does. He's, it looks like he's wearing a, a couch pillow on his head. He does look dumb. It looks like it, a throw pillow. It literally looks like he's dressing up to do an episode of Hey Babe. He does. He does. <laughs> it looks like a bit. It's, it literally, oh, my God. Should we get graduate? That's what we, sh- we should get those. Because it's graduation time right it now. It is graduation time right now. When does this episode come out? This is like three weeks, four weeks from now? Yeah. Damn we it. should do a graduation special where we each give commencement speeches. We should. That commencement speeches, and you could try some of your Ric Flair bits in there. I could do it. There you go. Um, um, yeah, he looked like he had a tufted velour uh, couch throw pillow on his head. Is, uh, so this is one of his paintings that he painted. I'm not sure if this is even the one I was talking about, but I think they went buck wild for him. This I mean, I, I'd it. go buck wild if Jim Carrey was my commencement. No, but it was, I watched it. It was a good speech, too. Like, just talked a lot. Like, like it, will, it will inspire. Where, did, where is it? Masharaha University? Maharsh? Maharsh? What school is that? Maharsh Institution of Universities? I don't know what he's saying. Um, 
I do. Jim Carrey, I would say, when people ask who's your favorite comedian of all time you, or who inspired you to do comedy, my answer usually is Jim Carrey. Really? Did yeah, you stand up? Well, yeah, because in the 90s, you know, when I, would, I was watching A Living Color in the early sure. 90s, and then I, all his movies, The Mask, Liar, Liar, yeah. all Ace Ventura's, all those movies were like, I was like, oh, cable I, would, guy is I, my I would love to man. be like that. Yeah, Dumb and Dumber Cable Guy. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, what's his name? That's is that Keith Robinson? Loke? <laughs> oh, it is. It's so low. I think yeah. he lives in Staten Island or lived Stop on Staten Island. He did. He did. Stop it. He did. He lived on or lived in Staten Island. Dumb and Dumber, classic. Um, so that's, that's not, so yeah, because I asked you, that, I was trying, I've been trying to think this whole time of what is my best moment of oh, the yeah, yeah, week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just my best moment of that the week. That could be a new segment. Best moment. It's oh, very difficult to find a moment yeah. in anything. I would what has been my best moment? Hmm. Um, I would say my best just moment. Ooh, you know what it was? I got um, ice cream for my kids on uh, Monday. I got ice cream for them. And I got a Reese's Peanut Butter Cups Carvel Anch from Carvel. We've spoken about this before, the Navel Anch Butt of Carvel's. Okay. And I, I didn't want anything. I said, you know what? I'm trying to get in shape, trying to lean out a little bit, trying to just get stronger in the gym. I said, I'm not going to eat that stuff. I said, so, um, I said, so I'm just going to get it for my kids. And my daughter, Delilah, was eating it, and she ate half of it, and she didn't want any more. She's like, oh, Daddy, my stomach hurts, so I was going to throw it away. But I noticed as I was throwing it away, because I was like, willpower, throw it away. My daughter's not going to eat ice cream that it's a day old. As I was throwing it away, I noticed it was almost like the light was hitting it. A chunk, a half chunk of a Reese's peanut butter cup was sticking out with vanilla ice cream and chocolate syrup just dripping off like its chin almost. Yeah. Like it literally looked like it was just, it was dripping off the yeah. peanut butter cup as if to say, you need to swallow me whole. Yeah. And I took that spoon yeah. and I ate it. Yeah. And that was the best five seconds of my life. Was that good? I immediately went to the bathroom and purged it and stuck my finger down my throat and threw it up. No, I'm kidding. But have I, you ever done that? Never in my life. Okay, I mean, I never, ever, ever would willingly make myself throw up, mm -hmm. and I never, ever, ever would get surgery that I didn't absolutely need. I don't care what happened to, I, unless it was a life or death situation, I would not get a, an elective surgery yeah, ever. I, don't believe in my, so I would either. never do it. I don't believe so either. I just don't, I just feel like you gotta just go with what God gave you. What's your take on Botox? On Botox, I, I would never uh, get it. Um, I personally think that aging... Never gonna get it, never, never gonna, gonna get, get it, it. Never, never gonna, gonna get, get it. Never whoa, 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 whoa! Get into the grove, baby. Hey, you got, got to, to prove your love, love to me. Grove. Talk about Grove. Love Grove. Let's Cap talk about Grove, baby. baby. Let's, Let's talk, talk about, about you and me. Let's, Let's talk, talk about all the good things and the bad things, Grove, that may be. Let's, Let's talk, talk about, about Grove. Grove. All right. Give me a G. G. G, you got your G, you got your G. Give me a R, R, you got your R, you got your R. Give me a O, O, you got your O, you got your O. Give me a V, V, you got your V, you got your V. Give me an E, E, you got your E, you got your E. What does it spell? Grove. Grove. So I ordered from Grove. Mm -hmm. I have a uh, solid dish soap. It's like a bar. And so I'm not using plastic, right? Okay. And so it's, it's like a bar and it stays right at my kitchen sink right there. And then I take the sponge and I kind of rub it on there. And that's how I, I, that's my dish soap. You're a solid guy. You need a solid bar of soap. That's why you use Grove. That's right. That's what I like. And it's twice as effective as the leading natural brands. They're fr friendlier to the planet and we love friendly. But what they do is they, they are an aggregate of all different kinds of, 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 of conscious brands. They carry hundreds of products aimed at replacing single use plastics across your home and personal care routine by 2025 grove will be 100 percent plastic free 100 percent plastic, plastic free. free go to grove.com slash hey babe today to join get, over two million households to get a free gift set worth up to 50 dollars with your first order plus shipping is fast and free get started right now at grove.com slash hey babe that's grove dot com slash hey babe oh my god. god all i got to say to you is america's Hello. number one 
meal kit. <laughs> hello fresh or our Spanish speaking audience. Hola fresca. Oh, hello fresh this my old friend. I've come to subscribe to you again. <laughs> nice. Yes. I heard that you have new summer choices. <laughs> <laughs> Choose from over 55 options weekly featuring pre portioned high quality yeah. ingredients. Customize your favorite dishes <laughs> with Hello Custom by swapping out one protein <laughs> or adding a veggie meal. Skip, <laughs> skip the grocery store and spend more time soaking up summer sun. HelloFresh Market is a one-stop shop for all your mealtime needs with quick breakfast, lunches, snacks, desserts, and more. You get them shipped right to your house. Aye. You got 20-minute meals. You got 30-minute meals. They have just tons of options. Uh, we love HelloFresh. We talk uh, about it every week. Talk about it every week. I use it. Sal uses it. Pimp uses it. We're all HelloFresh guys. You can customize your, what you get. You can swap out proteins. You can add some stuff. Everyone. It's way cheaper, like 72% cheaper than dining at a restaurant, even cheaper than the grocery store. Uh, come on. I mean, what are we doing here? You want to learn how to do. cook? You want to you start? You want to have an activity to do with your kids yeah. or bring your family together? Cooking is it. Cooking is it. And HelloFresh is cooking. That's what it is. Go to HelloFresh.com slash HeyBabe16 and use the code HeyBabe16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. I told my daughter, you're not getting a sweet 16. You're getting 16 free meals plus three free gifts. And she gave me a hug and said, I love you so much, Daddy. You're the best. Repeat it one more time, babe. HelloFresh.com slash HeyBabe16. Use the code HeyBabe16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. Um, I think that aging is just a part of living. Yeah. And we should just celebrate getting old as fuck so i recently not recently but like the last couple of years i find i got a line here okay I'm like because i squint so much because i have bad eyesight and it finally caught up to me and like became a perm so it's like right here right and it wasn't there like a few years ago and I, it's been annoying me so you think you're gonna get tox no i didn't think so but i had a friend of ours and i won't say any names because i don't know although they probably say that they get tox all the time but they were like just get tox and I was like, I'm a little nervous. And they said, it's just some botch in the face and it goes away. I said, but what about those people that you see? They get so much that they like no longer can smile. And then he says, yeah, but that's not what it is. You just get a little bit. You'll never know. So many people have Botox and you don't even know it because they do it the right way. You just don't want to get shot up all in your grill. So then I was like, well, they said it's not, it's safe and it goes away and it's not a big deal. And they started to make a case for it because I've never even entertained it for a split second because in my head you're just shooting botulism in your face and it's, 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 but I know. And then I found out after he told me more people I knew that did that do it that I didn't know. And then I'm like, if it just takes out this little line here. And again, never in my life would I get elective surge. Never. You wouldn't. I wouldn't. But I think like, I don't know. It's like you go in, you pay like a few bucks. They, they, it takes like five minutes and you leave. That sounds like, that sounds like fair. Yeah, I feel like you, if you got addicted to Botox, I got to be honest with you, it would be like, even though it would be like a thing that we'd all deal with together as your friends and family, but secretly we'd be laughing, I mean, a lot. Laughing. It behind. would be because you with like the Catwoman face would be really, really, really... Like, hard to take funny. Yeah, but I would not... <laughs> but I wouldn't get it that bad. But I'm saying, if you got an addiction, but If you I could. got addicted to... To-tock, like, you, everyone else like, is nothing addicted. Nothing could stop you. You're addicted to TikToks. I'm addicted to Botox. Botox. Well, can we pull up the world? The, wor- the worst botched... Uh, worst the, Botox. The worst, I mean, worst Botox. this woman. You know what it is? It's just raging Whoa. insecurity. What's it's the- raging insecurity. Yeah. I look like the guy in the back. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God, look at her face. It's poor thing. Poor little girl. They, they shouldn't be allowed to do that to her. Now, it, it's almost the doctor's fault, right? 19 years old. She looks like a cartoon. Eyes actually were swollen first. Then from 2010 to 2013, almost, all of it just All right, what about, no, what about, like, worst, worst plastic surgery? There's that woman, Jocelyn, Jocelyn Wildenstein. Look Jocelyn Wildenstein. Yeah. Put put worst plastic surgery Wildenstein. Oh my God! <laughs> look at that woman's <laughs> face. Today we look at. Oh. Yikes. Oh. Oh, that can't be real, dude. It's just not good. I mean, at what point? Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. 
Oh no! The lips wait, are wait, too wait. big. The, girl, wait, the one, hold on, the one laying in the bed just a few back. She was like, "I done fucked up." Yeah, she was yeah, like, she, "She's like, I done went and I fucked up." Yeah, it's look right, at, right, look right. at my face. Uh, a little bit more. There you go. She's yeah. like, "Please get out of my fucking face." I she's hate like, my life. But then, if you fast forward, this other girl is out of the hospital and she's got a parakeet on her shoulder, and she's like, <laughs> "I've accepted this, and this looks good." Look at that woman's eye. That that's that cannot be real. That can't be real. Is that a filter? Let's go to number one. That's monkeypox. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah, number one is that's the woman. That's her. This is her. Yeah, Joyce Wildenstein. She looks like a full. She looks like a uh, like a like a sphinx cat. Yes, yeah, she does. She, she looks, looks like, like a that. cat. Wait, I have a question. Like, is she like what does she do? And is she alive and well? And she must know that she. She made a few wrong turns at Albuquerque, and she can't come back from it. But I'm not here to put her down so much as to understand how and why. How and why is what we're trying to get to the bottom of, is a little how and why. Jo I think it's Jocelyn Wildenstein. Good luck spelling it. Uh, Pimp spelled before he spelt... Uh, uh, what would you spell before? And... Uh, uh, Weird thing, Joe. Uh, 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 I mean, he was analogy an analogous. Analogous. Joe was like, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you an analogous sentence," and I was like, "Okay, I don't know if analogous is where I know you mean analogy." He goes, "No, it is." He goes, "Type it in, pimp." And we turned and we started cracking up. We we're like, "Pimp could take two hundred times and not spell analogous," and he got it on the first try. Something happened today where pimp put letters together in a row that, and, and it he just, nailed he just it. Lucked out, yeah. I mean, yeah, because but but that's usually how it goes. Is people who can't spell easy words can spell insanely hard words. Yeah, that's what it is. Well, look at her in the seventies. You know, you get where she's coming from. That's crazy because <laughs> because because in ninety eight she was already like I done fucked up, and then five years later in two thousand three she's like let me I would be like all right let's pump the brakes. Is that a real picture from two thousand eight? <laughs> because honestly, I, again, I'm not here to shame it. But if that person was walking the street, it's so unnatural. It would be jarring. Here's what happens is, I'll be honest, is, is, is if we're looking at these pictures right now. And Pimp, we could put them up in the app, is in 1970s, she looks like an old person. Then 1998, she looks out of control nuts. 2003, she gets even worse. But then 2008, somehow, she starts to look more like she did in 1970s. <laughs> she almost just comes full circle with her plastic surgeries. Oh, my Lord, dude. That is... I, I want to know if that's real, that top left one. Yeah, it is. Oof. I mean, she said, you know, she's like, listen, my last name's Wildstein. I'm a wild child. I, um, men that get plastic surgery is pretty weird. <sighs> oh, men man. that get, it seems like almost every billionaire that you see has a lot of plastic surgery besides Bill Gates. Almost every other billionaire has big. You big, think so? You think Musk has? Yeah, I think Musk. I mean, you ever see Musk before and afters? No. Do Elon Musk before and after. I think he's had some work done. He's got hair implants. Yeah, see? Oh, shit. <laughs> Yo, look at him before the plants. Look at Jeff Bezos, dude. He looks like The Rock now. Actually, he looks a little bit in that picture like Taylor Williamson, a little bit. Because <laughs> wasn't he in a blue, wasn't he just in a blue collar oh, shirt? Oh, my God. And, he, and his hair is a little bit the same. Taylor Williamson plays Elon Musk <laughs> yeah, Taylor, before Elon had money. All of his life. And then the actual Elon Musk we know is played by who? Who plays the actual Elon? What, who looks like that? I don't know. Where are we going here? Oh, before and afters. Okay. Yeah, before and after so plastic surgeries are. You bot see the thing is when you botch oh, wow. a plastic surgery, yeah. it just it just sucks. And I think there must be tons of emotional trauma that come with that because you know that nobody made you do this. It's you that dumb fucked up. Yeah. It's 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 you did this and you decided to do this. And you have to feel like, why did I do this? Like well, that's what it is. It has to be something's bothering them so much that they need to change it. The only thing is, like, I wonder if whatever they end up with, if if popular opinion would say the new thing doesn't look right, maybe they're, they, they don't care. It's like, it's better than what I had. I heard that when you get breast implants as a woman, even though, even though, I guess as a man too, even, even though you might feel better because you've opened up your chest. Something happens like with the cells 
inside your body that it makes you insanely depressed. Same thing when you get a heart transplant. Really? It makes you insanely depressed because you're opening up your chest and there's something that science just doesn't understand yet about like a connection to your emotions through that. I've been watching, you ever watch The Unexplained on Netflix with I William have. Shatner? Were you guys talking about it? I just mentioned it off camera. Before. Okay, so so I just saw an episode. Oh, maybe it's not with William Shatner. I don't know. It's it, it, it's different episodes of something, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so maybe. so the one that I was just watching uh, last night was about this about um, you know, heart uh, about transplants. Did you see the guy that got a pig heart, and and it was it took for a couple of months, and then he passed like really? last month. It was the first ever pig to human heart transplant last month interesting a couple months ago my god i wish yeah. i wish DeRosa should have been the first one for that um, <laughs> yeah. um See, i is. i feel uh, so so what what i learned was uh, so what i what, what it was saying in the unexplained was is that is that this woman this girl 17 year old girl who had a some rare liver disease and okay. was gonna die right okay. and needed to get a liver lay down and was so needed to get a liver, just yeah, hang out. Yeah. Needed to get a liver transplant. Yeah. Okay. She got this liver transplant from this 47 year old guy who had died in a car accident like three days before. So she gets a liver transplant. She survives. She's getting healthy on her feet again, whatever, whatever, whatever. She yeah. then all of a sudden out of nowhere starts to have this unbelievable desire to start doing all her housework. Do it yourself job. She's putting down her own flooring. She's reconstructing <laughs> no, the bathroom. No. She's taking tiles out. She's a handy woman now. Because this guy in his heart of hearts. This guy was a freaking construction worker that she got the liver from. I don't believe that. I swear to God. I swear to God. You, you know what's crazy to be thinking that you are driving right now. You get into an accident and three days later, you, was it liver or heart? Liver. Three days. Imagine like you leave here, and then three days later, your liver is in someone else's body. And they're doing, and they're just doing stand up comedy. They have this desire to do stand up. <laughs> and they're, and I, I gave, I gave it to like a, you know, some Filipino girl, but she's just doing bits about her Puerto Rican kids and her and her mafia father. <laughs> but it was interesting because it's, 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 you know, a lot. Of science would think, oh, your talent and your thoughts and your memories would only be in your brain, but they think that is actually that now real? you are. Like we are, who we are, our personality and our traits are dispersed through every cell in our body. That's why these billions of cells in this person's liver transferred to the little girl, and now she started acting like him and just putting down her own flooring. But I and she started mixing cement for no reason. I, I can see like a biochemical, like something like about their the mood or whatever. But like it feels weird to be like in my body. Like in within my cells, that I transfer to you. Like I'll teach you how to use a hacksaw. That's but that's what that's what. Okay, you got high interest debt. High interest credit you card got, debt. You got stuff. You got you got you trying to get yourself out of a hole. You trying to pay your debt down. All of a sudden, you got a bill dropped on you, medical bill that well, you can't got, cover. You can't cover it at all. I got I got the place for you all online with simple and easy understand payment terms. It gives you one place, one way to get all your debt down. Upstart. It's not you're not hopeless. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. This is where Upstart comes in. You get rid of that high interest credit card debt and you get towards your financial freedom. One closer step towards your financial freedom. But the interest month after month usually is like it feels like it's never ending. We've all been there. And look, Upstart is powered personal loans that can help you pay down high interest debt, like you said. All online with simple and easy to understand payment terms. They've helped over 1.8 million customers so far. Again, whether it's paying off your debt, consolidating your debt, yeah. funding a personal expense, Upstart can help you get one fixed monthly payment. All the way up, start. Don't wait and check your rate today at upstart.com slash hey babe. That's upstart.com slash hey babe to check your rate today. Don't forget to use our URL to let them know we sent you. Loan amounts will be determined based on your credit income and certain other information provided in your loan application. Go to upstart.com slash hey babe. And within minutes, the loans can be from $1,000 to $50,000. The new science is like Pimp has this pulled up. I saw this yesterday too. 
uh, this guy got a head injury. He fell and hit his head, and then all of a sudden he woke up and he's playing music like he's Mozart. Yeah. Difficult to believe. You know, like, so but there's things on Without training? Zero training. Is one of only no, a very no, few no, no, people no. in the world God, zero training. who have had Let's something like this happen. Our Rick Sounder tells us how an accident this revealed is. a deeply hidden talent, what the man calls his beautiful disaster. The music is in his mind. His fingers do the rest. What Derek Amato has is a gift, a gift that came in the most unexpected way. It happened 12 years ago in a swimming pool accident. I miscalculated diving towards the shallow end, and I struck the bottom of the shallow end on this side of my okay, head. I was drunk at a the back end. End. After recovering, he was at a friend's house and walked over to a keyboard, and suddenly, without having played before, his hands were all over it. No way. Having never played before. That it's is called freaky, acquired dude. savant syndrome. The trauma to the head unlocks something unique inside Derek Amato's brain. So You're why can't we do this piano. at will? Like, why can't they understand how to tap? Because that's what they're saying. Like, we only, they think, remember you always hear, yeah. oh, you only use 10% 10, of your yeah. brain. They think it's even less now. They think most humans can use 1% to 2% of their brain. And a true mind-blowing human, let's say like an Elon Musk, can use like 5%. So they think like when you s traumatic brain injuries happen or certain things happen, somehow that part of their brain gets like unlocked to very close to or, or higher percent of its full capacity, and they can do that. There's so many people. There's a guy who um, got, uh, I think, struck by lightning, not Ric Flair. Somebody got struck by lightning, and they could speak all different languages oh, all that, of a sudden. Oh, that's the funnest. It's just, it's just locked in your brain. Do we have a look that up? Have we so that means that all our brains have Babbel locked inside of it. Right. Every single one of our brains have a, have a, have a free we subscription We have a Babbel. language learning app for life in our brains you, already. I mean, we still encourage you to go to Babbel.com, use your promo code, hey, babe, but if or get struck by lightning, and then it'll unlock. Yeah, there's 14 different languages. It's done not by AI, but by language uh, learning language experts. Language learning experts, which are in your fucking brain yeah and it's a fun way it's cognitive way to remember and they have 20 minute lessons 15 minute lessons it's a lot of fun here we go so this kid <laughs> um what uh, did we ever look them, them up where they get hit in the head and they start talking another language because that was what we should look up right now well look at this guy why do people wake up from coma speak another language so go down a little bit pimpy so this guy, Ruben Nezoma, a teenager from Atlanta, has made international headlines after waking up from a coma speaking fluent Spanish, oh. a language he had only had a basic understand a oh understanding of before. He had struggled to speak English after suffering the concussion during a football game, and then he just started speaking Spanish. Every time he felt like he was about to try to speak English, he felt like he was going to have a seizure, it said. Yeah, that's how much he hated English. He <laughs> yeah. was like, I only need, no, only habla espanoles. Yeah, dude, it's a real... Wow, some, this Australian man woke Spoke up and started speaking Welsh. Mandarin. Yeah, I don't know, man. Uh, by the way, speaking of... Have you ever been to Wales? I want to go to f Wales like you can't imagine. Most castles per square foot Where's in Wales? the world... Wales, in the, in the, UK. UK, I did. I've toured there. In Wales? Yeah. You went to uh, um, uh, Cardiff? Yeah. And you loved it? I loved it. Did you stay in a castle? I went to the castle. You went to Cardiff Castle. I went to the like a big castle. Was it? I walked all around it. It was on the grounds, but another castle. Like I was, I, I did it. You went castle hopping before the show. I went castle hopping. I'm not kidding. And in Cardiff, my boy, um, my boy lives out there. He's a he's a writer and director of films. And he lives Gareth. in Wales. Yeah. So did you yeah, go to pull, visit pull him? Up, pull up a. Yeah, I, I went. Uh, no, not that one. Cardiff Castle. It's right in the middle of Cardiff. Yeah, I went. I need to go to Wales. Is that, uh, maybe, it was, maybe that was it. Maybe one of those. That was it, I think. That one right there. No, no. To the left. I think that was it. Yeah. To the left. To the. How come the Democrats don't do that type for the in, midterm? Type in the, 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 uh, the raid. The raid? Yeah. Now? Actually, he's doing, a, he's doing a, he's directing Tom Hardy in a movie right now. Really? Yes. Garrett. Garrett. Right there. Oh, this That's is the my guy? boy right there. Yeah, yeah. That's your friend? Yeah. I want, if I go to Wales, can, can I go sleep at his house? Gareth I'm going Evans. to UK in October to do shows. Yeah. I'm hopefully Wales is on. He, Gareth Hugh Evans. Uh, Gareth Evans, yeah. Not Hugh Evans. I, I only, I mean, to me, he's Gareth Evans. How'd you meet Gareth Evans? He, 
we were a fan of his movies, The Raid and The Raid Two, and subsequent movies. And he has he's an amazing, amazing director. Right. Like no, you don't even know. Like he did. Like the raid is what inspired like John Wick and like okay. and that kind of thing. I gotta see the raid. Oh my dude, it's amazing. And he's since made a bunch of movies, and I'm selling him short by just call, calling out the raid. But he did another one called Apostles on Netflix, and one after that. And now he's working on a movie with with Tom Hardy. He is the nicest dude in the world. He's like your age, I think. And he was a fan of our show. He was a fan of our show. We met him. We went out there. We hit it off with him, became friends. And now every time I went back, I would see him. And when he comes here, he'd visit us here. And he's a great dude. Does he have a view of a castle from his house? I don't believe so, no. But nice house. Two floors? I haven't been to his house. I want to go visit Gareth in Wales. I'm telling you right now, the, uh, shout out to Gareth Evans. Shout out to Gareth of Wales. Yeah. I have a friend named Gareth Reynolds, but he lives in California. I, I, Gareth is a comedian. You know Gareth Reynolds. Yes, I know. He's, Gareth. he's from Wisconsin. So you have Gareth of Wales. I have Gareth of Wisconsin. Yeah, it's the same thing. Um, um, yeah, I was saying, I thought that for the midterms coming up this year, the Democrats, if they want to win, they should do, they should remake, uh, Beyonce song to the left, to the left, but go, <laughs> but go, uh, uh, to the left, to the left, give me all your votes in the box to the left. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's and then we good. could keep doing it. That's pretty good. I could have another you in a minute. Uh, yeah. Right. Is that you must not know about me? me you that's, must not know destiny, about me. Is it or is, is it, it destiny or is it Beyonce? I don't understand. Y'all gonna have another Trump in a minute <laughs> <laughs> if you don't put those votes to the left. Um, viral TikTok details man allegedly airdropping photo of penis to other passengers on a flight. Okay, now, let's get into it. I want to see. I want to see the TikTok. If you somehow had a picture of your penis on your phone and you accidentally airdropped it to people on the flight you were with. This is what would happen. Oh, if I, I thought you, I thought you could say if I accidentally received Let's it. Let's talk through both. Okay, so if I accidentally received it, this yeah. is what I do. I'd, I'd, I'd be looking at my phone, i go like this. And then i tap the person next to me and go. <laughs> Someone just like airdropped that to me on this phone. On this flight. You if, would show the person next to you the penis that you just got. I mean, I think I'd have to. Yeah. I'd be like, can you believe how... Oh, like if they were traveling with you? Or yeah, even yeah, not? like if it was... You, oh, oh you'd be like if it was I a random you were like, stranger. Tap, well, like, yeah. Oh, then no. Then no, I probably wouldn't say... I, then I'd just be like, oh my God, I feel like bad for this person. If I actually did it though, if I was the one who actually did it, I'm not kidding. I probably would try to open up the emergency exit in, <laughs> in midair and jump just out with it. no parachute. Just get out of the way. Wow. No, it's pretty cool. His name's Larry. Meet Larry, who just airdropped a whole flight photos of his pee-pee. Thankfully, I accepted it, saw who Meet was Larry, sending who it, just and immediately that started whole speaking up. Of his pee-pee. Thankfully, I accepted it, saw who was sending it, and immediately started speaking up. Thank you for the police escort. It was great hearing that lady go, photos of his pee-pee. What does she say? Is saying? that him right there? That's him. That's him. That's did Larry. He that just airdropped his cock. But he did. He, he goes sorry about that. It is assault. I can't hear it. She's saying it's assault. He said having a little fun. Meet Larry, who just airdropped that whole. And then there's a part oh. two, I think. Hey Larry, do you have a TikTok? Oh darn. Hey Larry, do you have a TikTok? In the text, it says he airdropped it to kids, too. Ah, okay. I know people are asking for an update. A few of us had to meet with an FBI agent who told us Larry was arrested and will be spending the weekend in whatever airport jail looks like. Whatever airport jail looks like. If I get an update, I will. There was a child who was sent the photo but didn't approve the airdrop. His dad was ready to fight. Outside of that, we all got statements and were told to wait for a phone call and we may get updates. What a day. Kind of also, to be honest with you, can I just be honest? It also kind of feels like this lady has nothing to do in her life at all. And she's like, what a day. It's because you know what the truth was? Is you were probably landing and you have zero to do in your life. So you were just like, let me just cause an uproar. Should he have sent an airdrop to dick pic? Of course not. Does Is it horrible? Yeah. But you're getting the FBI involved. It's like, just tell this guy that you're going to punch him in the fucking head and move on. And the kid who got airdrop the photo didn't even accept it. Let his father deal with that. Not you. If these people, dude, people, the attention-seeking whores people are just bother me to no end. <laughs> Even though Larry does look like an absolute pedophile Larry, pervert. Yeah. Larry, I, Larry's look's not doing him any favors. And I, now, let me ask you this. If Larry had a fucking thick, 
huge, gorgeous pee-pee and was jacked and ripped, I wonder if this lady would have cared at all. She, yeah, she, would the FBI be involved? I don't know. I, I, maybe I don't, a local authority. Maybe that, Exactly. That's what I was going to say, the local authorities. But, I mean, I, what would you do? Would you tell the flight attendant if you got airdropped what somebody's piece deal? What would you do if you got a uh, dick airdropped to you right in the middle of the airway? I, 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 if it was to me, I wouldn't care. I would maybe, maybe, like, maybe take it up with the guy. But if I did see him send it to, like, women or children, like, here's, a, here's an important deed. Was that a mortifying mistake? Or was he literally trying to airdrop his... Like, did he have that much... Was he that idiotic that he would airdrop his penis to, to strangers on the same plane he was on? Did it say? Um, it says the picture was this. said the photo being shared was a picture of a woman's face giving Larry head. A woman's face? Wait, <laughs> what? He, uh, there's no way he meant to... See, that's the other thing is there's no way he meant oh, to airdrop he, it to yeah, everyone. She said, I looked over and said, are you Larry? And he said, yes, I am. I this person's like, Instagram account is Daddy Strange 333. Oh, he, she, look, she said he, she, yeah, yeah. She said that, she, she said, did you mean to send me this? And Larry said, yes, I did. So le, what's up with Larry then? Yeah, maybe, maybe um, I guess like, whatever. I take back what I said before. Maybe Larry's a dick and needs to go well, to jail. Well, if he's, if he, yeah, if he's Yeah, I guess that. if he meant to do it. I was assuming he didn't mean to do it. And it was just an accident day. But I guess Daddy Strange 333 is saying she did mean, he did mean to do it. Whatever. Who spot him got him? My uh, airdrop famous, is never on. A famous young rapper. Never. Spot him got him? He's like a, the hot young rapper fled from police on a jet ski. I just thought that's so wild. Oh, was that like Oh, somewhere? it's like in a Bond movie. That's him right there. Spot him got him. <laughs> Isn't that what they're going to do with him? Spot him got him. Spot him got him. <laughs> spot him got him. I see him on the jet ski. Yeah, but what's his position? It's spot him got him. No, but he, where is he? He? No. Him, he named himself the thing that happens to him most often. <laughs> <laughs> I spotted, spot him, got him, got him. <laughs> Shit. Wait, they, they spotted me. No, 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 the police called the search like he got him. No, no, I didn't. I'm chase, still chasing I'm spot, spot, I spot him, got him. him. I spot him. Do you got him? No. no. I spot him. Spot him, got him. <laughs> um, what would, oh, what did he have on a jet ski? He had an AR-15 on him. All right. Well, <laughs> yeah. What? Very interesting. Spot him, got him. Look out for all his new stuff coming out on Spotify. <laughs> on spot him, got him, Fi. So he's on a jet ski with an AK-47? Let me ask you a question. This is why I don't jet ski. Am I out of touch? Like, how did you know who Spot em Got em was? Well, I just listened to all the trending music. I okay. Like and up. Spot em Got em was trending recently? Is he, has like he year. been a thing? So he's been a thing for a year. He's, he's on the radar of becoming a Do we know any of his songs or no way? I don't think so. Have you ever heard of him? Never heard of Spot em Got em. Right. I was going to say, like, if he's been on the radar for a year, you'd think with a name like Spot em Got em, I would have heard of him. I mean, he looks like a fun kid. You know? You think I would have heard him, seen him? I think I would. Yeah. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? I didn't ever heard him, seen him, spot him, got him. Why does every single rapper right now ha have the same haircut and face tattoos? Yeah. Every, and Jay-Z's hair is like this now, too. Oh, it's a Basquiat thing, actually. Yeah. Oh, that, Basquiat. Oh, that so looks less like a, like a whatever those boys were, and that looks more like a Basquiat. Basquiat's Lower East Side from the Lower Hell East Side yeah, of Manhattan, bro. right? What is he, an artist, right? Hey, Michelle. Yeah. Basquiat. Well, he's passed, but he was... He was a very young, prolific, like, uh, I mean, he was in the whole time of, like, that pop art, that punk pop renaissance in the Lower East Side, like, Andy Warhol, that whole, that whole. He was that movie. era. Like, he was, yeah, knew Andy so Warhol. He was, what? yeah, he knew him, yeah. So, but he was, a, he was younger than. He died at 27, too, I think, right? Isn't very young. part of the I 27 think, club? I Drugs? Think in OD, yep. yeah. Galen Maxwell sentenced to 20 years in prison. Wait, Allegedly. 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 You know what she should do? What? Take it up no, with Bloom Cafe. Cafe. I wonder if they'll endorse that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, they, uh, uh, you, she got 20 years, Ghislaine Maxwell. So did, when it, this, might have, this might be two, three weeks. Ghislaine Maxwell might be hung in prison by now. Did you hear what she said, too? Pimp, what was it? She was like, to all the people that got like hurt, look at her, I'm sorry, and I hope yeah. you, you what would she say? Here's the quote. To you, to you, to, to you, to you, to you all, all the victims who came in court and those outside, I am sorry for the pain that you experienced. I hope my conviction and harsh incarceration brings you closure. That's it. That's it. That's she's not being. I don't know. I she's calling it a harsh, incar harsh incarceration. So that means she's being like. 
She's being petty about it. Have we ever heard her speak? I don't even know. What no, nobody talking. hears her speak. Ghislaine Maxwell, and she got sentenced to 20 years. She's 60. She can, She might get out of jail if she gets out with like 10 with good behavior. Or what, what, that, Was that a picture of her? She looked like she got some plastic surge. Yeah. No, that's not her. Is that her family? That's one of the accusers. Oh, one of the accusers. The guy in the back looks jacked. Um, that's one of the accusers. Okay. Okay. A lot of court cases going on. A lot of court cases. A lot of people getting sued. You ever watch the old people's court with Judge Wapner? Are you too young for that? It was like the OG of courtroom television. People's Court starring Judge What's it called? Wapner. People's so, Court. So Judge Wapner. So People's Court was like a prereq to Judge Judy. Oh, big time. Like it was, it, there was no, there's no Judge Judy without Judge Wapner. Judge, okay, so I want to shout out Judge Wapner. Did you ever hear this? Dun, 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 dun. That's the music to it. Yeah. Yeah. Dun, yeah. Dun, 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 dun. And they were like, the defendant is suing his neighbor. Yes, for a yes, yes, okay. So Judge Wapner, would he go in on people? Oh, no one, nobody after WAP. Nobody after him. He Ju- was, and he was awesome. He was awesome. Let's play the game. Ju- Judge Joseph Wapner, dead or alive. Oh, man. I got to say dead only because I watched him growing up, and that's what he looked like when I grew up. Let's see. Judge Please Wap- be alive. I hope you're alive. I hope you're alive, Judge. Died in oh, 2017, not too long five ago. Five years ago. Five years ago. Feb 26, 2017, we I, lost. I bet you there's like the best of on YouTube. Like of the Judge best Wapner? Of, of Wapner. Yeah, man. Do you know that, that, that Judge Judes is like, a, like she's worth like a half a billion dollars or some shit? And you know her husband is worth like three times the money as she? No. As she is? Yeah. What so when she do? goes home, he's like, how's what your little TV do? show? He's a big, Google Judge Judy's husband's net worth. Judge, yeah, she's got a $460 million fortune, but I think her husband is worth like 10 times as much money. I think her husband's like a multi-billionaire. 550 are, million is what you, her husband's are worth. Are you serious? Yep. Are you serious? Yep. Wait, do you know, that, I don't know how accurate these things are, but do you understand what it means for her to be worth $400 million? Meaning like she has all her assets and cash and everything combined. But she's worth, they're saying she's worth $400 million, which means she's made a billion dollars. Like you can't, like less, less taxes. Like God, she's saying, I understand. She's saying she's she's ne- a net worth. Well, dude, you know what her salary is still yearly? I think if she's still doing new episodes or once it was, she was the highest paid act, highest paid person in television history, like fifteen years in a row. You know what her salary was for Judge Judy a year? Her salary, fifty five million dollars no a year. No way. Judge Judy's no salary way. a year. No. Take her to court. Forty seven million dollars a year, folks. So I finagled it by eight mil. Oh my. God. God. Yeah, she's making LeBron James money. Wait, 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 wait. Go, go down. What does that say? It's not excessive. I, w- I wonder what the... Right there. Judge Judy's... Can you click on that? Judge Judy's $47 million salary isn't excessive. Who's worth $47 million a year? Who? Um, Who's worth it? Yeah. Uh, J- Jay Leno and David Letterman were getting no more than $28 million a year. She's doubled them. Yep. But why? Why does she make that? Is there, are the think, ratings that high? Yeah, and I think it's a, every daily show. Their ratings are probably that high. She's been on TV forever, making her one, the highest paid person in, on television. She made more money wait, than wait, Seinfeld. Yeah, in subsequent negotiations, she would slip her boss's dollar figures in sealed envelopes across the table. Oh, my God, dude. There you go. 391,000 per epi Episode. Wepi. Yeah, she's... Oh, my God. She's Joe Rogan. I gotta get on Judge Judy. Yeah, she's 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 Joe Rogan. Dude, how she, about... She, an episode is 20 minutes. An episode is 20 minutes. She probably films an entire season of Judge Judy in, like, three weeks. If I was Judge Judy... Dude, I'm not kidding. Name a place. Name a place. Uh, anything from... Bora a, Bora. A, a Bora Bora, but name something specific. Like, anything from... Just name it, like... like like anyway. a specific city? No, I mean like a specific, like literal location, like like an address. Um, um, I'm uh sixteen sixteen fifty five Queens Boulevard. Right, but I just mean name uh. name what it is. Is it is it this building? Is it Yankee Stadium? Is it a CBS? Oh, oh okay. Um, name anything. The O2 Arena. O2 Arena. If I was Judge Judy, I would walk. I would fly there. I'd go into the, the O2 Arena with my gown on, right, nude underneath. 
I get right to center. I get on stage. I lift my gown up. If I was Judge Judy, yeah. I would squat and I would shit on the stage. That's what you do. And I drop my gown down and I just be like, and I just like moonwalk out. If Why I was Judge not? Judy. If I was Judge Judy on the last episode of my show, because I've made so much money on the very last episode of the very last court case, I would swear to God, I would hit that gavel thing, that gavel. Yeah. I'd hit it right with my pussy. <laughs> I would bump my pussy right off it, nude on the air, live episode. I just move the candy. I, I would bump it right there and say, "That's what you get." I think she should do whatever she wants. She should do, Judge Judy should start an OnlyFans. She should shit in her hands, throw it to people. Why the hell not? She's got monkeypox. She should throw it. She yeah. should start an OnlyFans. If I was her, I would do some weird stuff. Speak. Like just get like a dick sewn onto my hand or something. How about this? Pat Sajak from Wheel of Fortune earns fourteen mil. Vanna White earns $10 million a year. That is the best job. I'd rather do, would you rather do Judge Judy's job every day in court and make $47 million a year or Vanna White's job every day in the studio and turn the letters? Dude, Vanna White's job in a heartbeat. I do it for free now teaching my kids how to read. You do. I point at different letters and ask them to read the sentence. Vanna White's getting $10 million a year for it. Dude, hit me up with Vanna White's net worth. Ten million. We no. That's oh, what her she worth. Her net worth. Her net worth. Right. Listen, her net worth's got to be a hundred schmil. This is a fun game to play. People's okay. net worth. Oh my god! I just saw it. Oh, eighty-five my god. million. Yolanda Vega. Eighty-five million dollars. Eighty-five million dollar folks on Vanna White. That's it. I mean, never. You don't need Judge Judy money. Like th that's more than you could ever spend. Listen, how easy Vanna White's job is. They start calling her Vanna White privilege. <laughs> <laughs> hey, how about this? Why is she? Why doesn't she stop? Why would she stop? Well, because I all mean, you got to do is, is, is turn Vanna letters White? around and make Vanna ten White? mil. She's she's born nineteen. Does anyone have a bigger forehead than Pat Sajak? It's up. To, she's sixty five. That's it. She's, God bless her. When did she start? Oh, she's, she's got a daughter. She's the she's. She, not enough people talk about her anymore. Like, yeah, she is unique in that she is super rich super famous and i mean super super famous like wheel of fortune is iconic pop culture she's attached right to it if not more so than pat sajak and but she doesn't she hasn't done anything besides play that role vanna white makes 10 million 10 million dollars a year no one has ever heard her talk i know she never speaks she she speaks a little but i know what you mean almost she's i bet you she has said the fewest words on television and made the most money. <gasps> I guarantee you're right about that. Uh, yeah. And also, did you see that she wasn't the first letter turner? There was a lady that left. Oh, who's that? Oh, you know, she should be taking the gavel and slamming herself in the... That's in what the, she should be doing. Yeah. The lady that left. We we're all over the charts here. Look at Vanna. She looks unbelievable. Also, I bet you that is there... Vanna's a very uncommon name. This is a year ago. That's, that's her what house. She looks like now. Yeah, <laughs> that's her. That, it is her house. She lives in a museum. Those are her family's photos. She lives in a straight up. What museum. am I supposed to say? The show must go on. So I said yes. I had no training or experience. I just jumped in and did it, and I was scared to death. Well, but you've. Se I mean, you've seen it What's for the so many years. It probably came to you quite naturally. I would like. To My father still to this day calls her Kelly Ripa. I'm like, it's Kelly Ripa. And then I'm like, oh, yeah. And then I'm like, did you see the new Kelly Ripa? <laughs> and like, I'm like, it's Ripa. But I guess it is pronounced Ripa. R-I-P-A. I don't care. I, I Ripa, because Ripa, Kelly Ripa should be R-I-P-P-A. That's true. But she spells it R-I-P-A. I bet you it is Ripa, and she says Ripa. Just to be, yeah. Because who's saying Ripa for that? Nobody. You know? De Stefano, Volcano. It's De Stefano. Vol Volcano. Right. It's Volcano. Right. Nobody gets it right. Nobody ever's gotten it right. At, when you get called on stage, 50-50 shot? Usually it's Chris Di, Usually it's, it's, it's Chris Stefano. Or usually it's Chris Stefano, even though it's Chris, I, it's Chris Stefano. But you've heard people pronounce that both ways. That's the thing. I've never... I've never heard of another Volcano. I've never corrected anyone. I don't care. You don't care. I don't either. People get so caught up right before I go on. They're People like, get can so you just tell me, can you just say, you know, like, it's Volcano. They're like, Volcano, Volcano, Volcano. I'm like, just say anything. It doesn't matter. People get so mad at everything. Like on Chrissy Chaos the other day, I started talking about um, uh, Roe v. Wade because of the whole, like, overturn thing. And people are up in arms about jokes I was making, just yelling at me. And now I'd like to take a moment to tell you on Hey Babe what I think of Roe v. Wade. Okay. This has been Hey Babe. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be a fake, don't be a 